Okay, well, we'll kind of get ourselves going here. We're few but, few but uh, quality as the case may be. I'm Ron Lent with Bremer Iowa State Extension. Uh, we get involved with a number of projects like this. This one, uh, we believe when we talked to Amanda last winter, this is kind of what she picked from a list of half, about a dozen different programs. So uh, we designed this one and it'll be used actually three times this week. Uh, give you an idea what that is, is when you're talking about uh, we'll be mainly mentioning as far as uh, raised beds and, and square foot gardening. And that's uh, it's, it's a growing program for a lot of people. Uh, it's something that you can do uh, most generally if you've ever tasted uh, fresh out of the garden uh, it does make a difference. If you think in most of our commercial food we get in the grocery stores those are bred specifically for transportation, convenience, etc. I think the average figure our food moves about 1,600 miles. I said to my wife that one time, and she's a former home ec teacher, excuse me, consumer science. Um, she said, that seems awfully high. I said, well, uh, next time you just grab a, next time you're at the grocery store, just bring it home, we'll take a look at it. So when she was eating some Moroccan uh, um, clementines and some grapes from Peru, she started thinking that maybe, yeah, there is quite a bit to this. So as growing your own can certainly make a difference. Raised beds or square foot gardening is a relatively simple process. Um, we just put in 12 boxes here in Waverly in a new garden, uh, just about a block northwest of the old junior high. Uh, that'll be for families only. Uh, those were just built this week. Um, and there's 62 over at the community garden uh, over there on 2nd Street Southwest. We can make use of a lot of things. Overall, as far as the pros on it, uh, you can get increased production from a small plot. Give you an idea, if you're looking at square foot gardening in one of those sheets I gave you there, if you're talking about a, a 4 by 8 uh, box there, that single sheet, um, you could uh, grow theoretically uh, about 280 carats in a 4x8 box if you want. So there's a lot of things you can do. There's no weeding, little or no weeding or tilling. It's convenient. Uh, these are some pictures from the community garden there from last fall. Uh, gives you an idea of the size. Uh, as far as cons, it does take some setup time and some cost. Uh, but if you look at it on a long-term basis, uh, that's certainly a real plus. It does take a little bit more watering. So how much can you really grow? Uh, these boxes you can make 4x4 four four or 4x8 four as the case may be. With these, if you're talking a 4x4, four four, you've got essentially uh, 16 squares. If you've got a 4x8, you've got 32 squares. So in each of those squares, uh, you can go any, depending upon what, if you're growing, uh, for example, carrots, you can get 9 per box. So you can do a lot in a small area. So if you're limited by space, which a lot of people are, they're pretty efficient. So that's where, for example, the ones we've got over here at the uh, Community Sharing Garden on 5th and South West uh, Junction right there. Right now there's 62. Uh, we put three more in here uh, last week. You're certainly welcome to visit. If you haven't been there, stop by. Uh, planning date's Saturday, so um, we'll probably uh, We'll probably get a little muddy, but uh, we'll get it in the ground. And then also we have work times on Tuesday nights from 6 to 8 and Saturday from 9 to 11. So you're certainly welcome to stop by and, and uh, spend some time in learning. So how much can you put in a one-foot box? Well, typically the ones that you can get about one per box are like broccoli, cabbage, uh, tomatoes, etc. Uh, if you're going to put four in, you can do that with uh, chard, for example, or beans. You can get up to nine on beets and 16 with carrot, carrots or radishes. So you multiply that times 32. If you've got uh, four by eight, you can get a lot there also. A lot of it has to do with what are you going to eat? What do your family eat? What are you planning for? Uh, sometimes it's a chance to try some new stuff. As far as how do you build them? Uh, basically, you can use them for lumber. Uh, you can get that from most of your lumber yards. Today, most of our uh, treated lumber, which will like, make them last for a lot longer. Don't use the same things that were used uh, a generation ago for railroad ties, for example, which were creosote treated. So 
or if you want you can certainly line it with plastic. Most people put a piece of cardboard on the bottom and then put uh, compost from it. You can get that from the city supply. Uh, you can make the squares if you want. If not, uh, you don't have to either. Or you can just plant it. This is one over in Janesville uh, at one of the uh, assisted living places. They did it a couple of different ways. They went with just a solid box. They went vertical and horizontal at the same time. So kind of use your own creativity as the case may be. It's a good way to get the family involved. This day and age, between sports, school activities, we hardly see each other anymore. You know, that's unfortunately the case. But it also teaches them where food comes from. A lot of kids, you ask, where the food come from? Where do they tell you? Grocery store. A lot of them have never actually grown food. And as we get more separated from production agriculture, even our own kids, and I'm embarrassed to say that, one generation they lose it. It's that loss before they know where it came from. And if you had homegrown, uh, this was one of our two loads we got one day last summer from our uh, garden over there. You can grow some healthy ones. These onions right here were my size of my hand. So you can grow some pretty healthy ones. In the back of my trip, in the back of my pickup is 500 and Around 550 of the plants for those this year. That's a special variety we get from a dealer. They call it Isla Craig. They come from an island in, off the Scottish coast. The other options, you can use city plots. Like we said, we just developed those four, uh, 12 new ones over there on uh, 4th Street Northwest. Uh, I think three of them are available also. Now, what can a person do? How many here were, were any of you at the Bremer County Fair last fall or last summer? Okay, did, did you get a chance to go in the 4-H building? Okay, well the, the best of show at the horticulture show, 10-year-old boy won it. First time he entered, he had a 16-pound cabbage. Started out in a styrofoam cup and a seed. Then transferred it. Uh, his dad's a friend of mine, has got shorthorn cows. I was just joking with him, must be the shorthorns. Uh, manure that does that good a job. So that's one thing you, about it. You know, what can, how much can you grow from a $2 package of seed? If you think in terms of it, return on investment. Tomatoes, for example. Uh, we had one tomato plant uh, last year that we had over 60 pounds off of. So you can do if you have the right investment. So, so you can make some investments in some seed and some soil, some water, the labor, etc. But you can certainly get that. And what about for those that don't even have the space for a box? Our daughter lives on the third floor of an apartment in Chicago. She's got a, I, she calls it a walkout. I call it a step out, which is about oh, that big on the outside of a building. This is what you can do with a pot. Make sure that you do have it open at the bottom so the water drains. Sometimes children don't listen to their parents occasionally. Uh, so when I told her that, ah, we don't need to do that. I said, okay, we can make you learn. So the next year, when nothing grew, uh, putting some rocks at the bottom with a hole and let it drain, the soil takes care of it. Again, that's part of the education process. So those plots certainly are available. Some businesses, some industries have their own plots for their employees, and certainly the city of Waverly's been real progressive of using some of those flood lots that uh, got uh, ruined during the 2008 uh, Cedar flood, such as the one we did with the community garden there. Well, it sounds easy, but there's also some challenges. Uh, the biggest one we had last year, and probably in the state of Iowa, is this little thing called a Japanese beetle. Intriguingly, uh, this started, came across in the late 19, 1920s in New Jersey and has slowly moved westward. The uh, insect itself, right now, he's sleeping. Okay, about another six weeks, he'll emerge as an adult. They've got that purplish frame on it green emerald head on it. They have the uh, unique in the ability to both uh, feed and breed at the same time. The, at our uh, 
community orchard. We had hundreds of those last year. Uh, this is going to be a big challenge. Uh, they uh, now are moving into southern Iowa and over in the western part of the state. A year or two ago when we were talking to the folks at campus and some of the challenges are trying to keep track of this and they're going, well, we, we don't have those. We're going, just wait. So last summer, suddenly, here was this big explosion of articles in central Iowa about these Japanese beetles. They've moved. And so they continually move. They'll stay here. All they do is continue to grow. Well, there's a certain pride that comes with it. You know, kids are starting to learn how food comes from and how to prepare it. Rather than just getting everything shipped to them, there's a certain pride. Unfortunately, a lot of kids today don't know how to cook. It's amazing, especially when you get into larger cities. So one of the things you, that's a nice adventure from is they can also learn how to uh, cook at the same time. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, the best of plans uh, don't work out, but you have to have some patience with it. Sometimes it works out. So our community garden over here, for example, last year over 9,000 pounds of produce was made there. About half of it went to the Northeast Iowa Food Bank. Uh, the other half stayed locally here with church meal sites, social service organizations, uh, senior center, Cedar Valley, friends of the family. Oh, uh, Northeast Iowa Community Action, uh, the assisted living north of the uh, library. That's uh, where the, about half of went to. It's fresh. Many of the folks, and that's the big challenge, a lot of the organizations that work, work with the food bank realize most of theirs are processed. It's very little fresh. So when we can get it, it makes a big difference. Also, uh, the Northeast Iowa Food Bank just got a large grant for refrigeration, so they'll be able to offer uh, frozen meat protein in the future too, which will be a big plus. Well, that's the idea of projects like this. You can kind of share from each other. Uh, different groups work together. And that's also, there's a lot of different tools that will be able. I think it's probably uh, some of the simplest ones you can keep track of. You've got uh, everything from a hoe to uh, uh, small hand tools. So it doesn't take much. That's one of the beauties of it. Uh, so things can be worked with that together. And it's a nice way to get the next generation involved. Uh, it's a way to get them understanding where it came from. Uh, we had an interesting tour what was it, two summers ago here in Waverly. We had a church group that came through uh, one of the uh, Lutheran churches and they took them over to the garden there. And the kids were out there and we let them water and learn a little bit. And so one kid was pointing and he says, now what's that thing? And I says, well that's a cabbage. He says, oh, do we eat cabbage? I'm going, you ever had sauerkraut at the Cubs game? These guys are from Chicago. He's going, yeah, that's where it came from. Nah, I, yeah, that's where sauerkraut comes from. So those are some of the educational things that are available. Also, there's guidance. Uh, we have a master gardener program. It's quite, quite uh, active here in Bremer County and also in the state of Iowa. Over 10,000 people have taken the class. This fall, there'll be one over at... Uh, Waterloo for this particular area. So you can do a lot of things. If you need help, you're certainly welcome to call us at the Extension Office there in Tripola, you know, or you can work with the sharing garden itself. That was one day's harvest right there uh, last summer. And uh, so there's a lot of things that you can do. Now with the handouts we gave you there, this will give you some suggestions. First one, uh, this one right here on how to create them. what to grow in them, and some of the 